Shalom everyone and welcome to our Jam Midweek every Wednesday at 9 p.m. And today we're gonna, of course, again learn about the Word of God. But before that, let's pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you for today's midweek service. And once again, even though we are far apart, some of us are still in Bali, some of us in Central Java, some of us in the Philippines, some of us in Hong Kong, some of us in Macau. But we trust that we are united in your spirit and we praise your name. And when we praise and worship you, we trust that you come and dwell on our praise and worship. In particular, when we are worshiping you by being a good disciple, listening to your word. So build us, Lord, with your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray and everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. How's everybody? I believe everyone is great. And uh, it's exciting because uh, we are going to start having fellowship back at our church venue again but to make sure that i don't waste time tonight i'm going to give you all the details throughout this coming week okay it's going to be special especially with our first day or first sunday back at our church venue okay uh and i'm having a little bit of a music there so that it's not too quiet okay uh so please uh, excuse my loud voice because obviously I need to be louder than the music um, but hey it's a uh, worship music so let us listen to the Word of God while we are worshiping with our spirit okay so today we're gonna learn about um, the Lord's restoration okay we're gonna learn about God's restoration let's open our Bible from the book of Jeremiah chapter 15 verses 19 okay just one verse for tonight but a couple of points that we're going to learn tonight the book of jeremiah chapter 15 verse 19 okay let us all read together if you can stand up please you can stand up and read the bible verse together with me with whatever uh, bible that you're using whether you're using an iv or kgv uh KJV, sorry, <laughs> or the Indonesian Bible or the Tagalog Bible, okay? Let's read together Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 19. One, two, three. If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let these people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. Let's pray once again. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Bible verse. Speak to each and every one of us tonight. Cover us with your mighty blood so that we can focus on you. And hide your servant behind your cross so that you're the one that will minister each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to learn about God's restoration. Now from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 19. The very first line it says, if you repent, I will restore you. The first point that I want us to learn about tonight is when it comes to God's restoration, God is all about restoring us to the fullest. Okay? And we're going to discuss about it tonight. God is all about restoring us to the fullest. But there is one condition for that restoration to take place. And it is very clear. Tonight, we are reminded that for that restoration to take place, you and I, we must repent first. Okay? We must repent. Now, we're talking about a restoration for someone who does not know Jesus at all. Uh, of course, that person has to repent and accept Jesus Christ. But also, we're talking about a restoration for people who already know Jesus Christ but maybe they backslide or or perhaps maybe not backslide not leaving Jesus but maybe they've been lazy okay I mean we've all been there we've all been to that place where we just you know we feel stuck and we keep on doing the same thing over and over again and we feel maybe not lazy per se but we feel discouraged and if we are that we need to repent as well we need to repent so that our focus will be back on our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we repent, that restoration will take place. Once again, if this is about 
somebody who hasn't received Jesus Christ, then that repentance will lead that person into that restoration where that person's life will be, you know, will be changed totally. A total transformation from not knowing Jesus to a life with Jesus, a life protected by Jesus, covered by Jesus Christ. But also for those of us, including myself, whose life or maybe ministry has been discouraged for whatever reason, one reason or the other, you know, we have been discouraged and we need repentance as well. So that when we repent, then our ministry will be restored again. Our life, our faith will be restored again. So that's rule number one. If you want this restoration, we must repent church. I don't know if you have been backsliding so far or maybe you have been discouraged. I gotta admit, over the past two weeks, I have been feeling discouraged for losing my mother. I was so close with her. I mean, she was close with all the children. So in my life in particular, I was so close in relation with the ministry. She was my supporter. I mean, she even went to many places with me. She loved that. She was a servant in her own right too. I mean, the very last photo that I had with her in Manado, the hometown of my wife, Pastor Ajun, I just realized that the last photo was I was standing right next to her just right after I finished preaching church. So I was discouraged. Not because I was disgruntled with God. No, because... Hey, church, we all know that for us to live is Christ, but today is gain. So I know that mommy is in a much better place right now with our Lord Jesus Christ. But I was discouraged because I felt that I lost that special person in my life that I would still want to care for still many years to come, but I know that I'm not able to do that anymore. So I was feeling discouraged for a little bit. I mean, I'm still recovering now, but praise God, God is lifting my soul up day by day. That's how good He is. That's how much God wants me to repent, church. And I believe that's how much God wants you to repent also. Why? Because God is all about restoring you and me to the fullest, like I said. But the question is whether you want that restoration or not. And I praise God, I wanted that restoration, so... It was only a matter of time that I realized, you know what, enough is enough. I have to start getting back up again. Starting to pray again, starting to get back with the older live broadcast and everything again. So that's rule number one, church. You have to repent. And tonight, I'm encouraging you all again, together with me, let us repent so that that restoration will take place. The second point that we must learn about God's restoration is that when He restore you, He's not just restoring you to be, you know, back to being good Christians, sitting down and listening to God's Word, going to church and be a good church member. No. The Bible say, I will restore you that you may serve me. So when God restores you and me, He's not just restoring you to be back to your previous condition, which was good enough. No, God is restoring you to a better condition. He wants you to serve Him. That's why if you haven't received Jesus Christ, church, oh my, I'm calling you church, I'm prophesying over you if you haven't received Jesus Christ. Receive Him. Because He does not want you to just know Him as God and Savior. He wants you to be His partner in ministry. He wants you to serve Him. He wants you to serve His people. So it's worth it to follow Jesus Christ to accept him as your Lord and Savior because you get to be his servant you get to serve him church but that's not it that's not it church the Bible continues to say if you utter worthy not worthless words meaning that if you are a good worker not just doing so so you know you do you're a responsible worker you're a responsible servant church God wants to promote you and me as well Like I said, God's restoration 
is not just a so-so restoration. God is all about restoring you and me to the fullest, not just at step one or step two, but to the fullest. He's about to promote you again and again and again. Until even you get to become his spokesman, a spokesperson for our Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine that position is so valuable, so worthy. And we're not worthy actually, but God makes you and me worthy. And so, first, if you want to have this restoration, like I said, we must repent, church. And we must realize that God does not want to restore us so that we can sit down and be a good churchgoer. He wants us to serve Him. And not only that, the last point is, God wants us to be a good servant. Because when we become a good servant, we're going to get updated church. It's not just your mobile phone that gets updated all the time. You and me as God's church, as the body of Christ, we get updated as well, church. We get updated all the time. And God wants us to continue to level up. You remember Pastor Chris? He always said the word level up. And he had his level up as well. He started a ministry, United, uh, sorry, Ultimate in Faith, uh, ultimate faith in Christ ministry. That's awesome, church. That's a level up. And that's what God wants you and me to have. To be a spokesperson of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, don't get me wrong. Not everybody has to be a pastor. Not everybody has to be a preacher. Not everybody has to be an evangelist even. But the Bible says that we must testify. Everybody has to testify. And you know what? That's what my mom exactly did. She was not a preacher. She was not an evangelist. But you know what? She testified. Every time she sat down with someone, she testified. I never saw her sitting down with just about anybody. Her family members, her relatives, her siblings, her friends, her church members, or anyone that she does not know. I never seen her sitting down and not testifying about God's goodness. So church, let us testify about God's goodness. Okay, don't worry about the words from your mouth. A lot of people say, I'm afraid to say things about Jesus. The Holy Spirit will fill your word, fill your mouth with the word of God for you to say things. And don't worry about those people going against you. The Bible say, let the people turn to you, not you turn to them. Let these people look at you as their role model, not them becoming your role model church. You must become the influence, not the people becoming your influence so that you follow them. They must follow you following Jesus. And if you read, again, you can read by yourself, verses 20 and 21 reminds you and me that God is our stronghold. He becomes, He will make us a wall, you know. He will make us a wall to these people, a fortified wall of bronze. These people, some of them, not all, some of them, they will fight against us and will try to overcome you and me. But you know what? God is there to rescue you and me. So you don't need to worry, church. I know we all live now in a society where more people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. But you know what? God is with us. And when God is with us, who can be against us? God is about to restore not just you and me, church. God wants to restore the whole earth. God wants to restore everybody. That's what we're supposed to do. We are in the business. Not just simply to get so many people to come to church, but we are in the business to make sure that we fill the kingdom of God, heaven, and empty the hell. The devil will always try to obstruct this restoration from God. The church, let us be reminded today, God wants you and me to have that restoration to the fullest so that hell will be emptied and heaven will be filled with God's people. So let us repent tonight. Let us repent and let us serve God. Not only that, let us reach for more so that we can be updated and we will be promoted to be his spokesperson and testify of his greatness. That's God's restoration, okay? He wants to restore you and me to make sure that we get to that level, that we become his spokesperson, church, okay?
Let's pray tonight. Lord, thank you for tonight's Bible verse to remind us that you want to you want to restore us, Lord, and you want to restore us to the fullest. And so we claim all these three points, Lord Jesus. We repent and we give ourselves to serve you, Lord. And we give ourselves to be promoted by you, to become your spokesperson, to testify to the whole world about your goodness, Lord. We thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And if you haven't received Jesus or you want to get back to Jesus, today is the day. Repeat after my prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy. Today, I want to accept you in my life. Forgive me of all my sins. From today, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. From now and forever, you are my God, my King. Rule over my life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. So that's great. God's restoration is in the offing. Is coming, is rushing towards you and me, church. Get ready, especially this Sunday. We're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. So get ready for more from God. Amen. Let's close our midweek service. Lord in heaven, once again, we thank you for tonight's midweek service to remind us that Oh, you want to restore us to the fullest, Lord. So restore us, Lord. We repent. We repent. Forgive us, Lord, if we have been doing things that you don't want us to be doing, Lord. Forgive us if we have been discouraged for whatever reason, Lord. We want to get back on track again, Lord. So help us to get back on track to serve you responsibly and even more so so that we get to become your spokesperson, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for tonight's midweek service thank you lord now we are ready to go out there and be a blessing to other people as we have been blessed as well thank you lord jesus my brothers and sisters let us raise our hands and receive the blessing from our father in heaven and also the life and peace and joy from our lord jesus christ together with the strength that we receive through the fellowship with the holy spirit in the name of jesus we pray everybody say amen god bless you guys and happy wednesday night